Praise God, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. We are welcome all those who are here this morning to worship with us. Praise the name of Jesus and those who are listening to us and looking at us at the World Wide Web. We welcome you to the Calder New Testament Church of God where our pastor is Carson Ferdinand and his wife, lovely wife Suzette Ferdinand and our assistant pastor Diana C. Williams and our next minister, Simeon Bacchus. So we are here this morning to lift up God, to give him praise and thanks. So feel free to worship with us here this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We praise your name, God. We exalt your name this morning. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, God. We give you praise. We give you thanks, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. There is none like unto you this morning. So we just worship you for who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Today, the ladies responsible for service today, our ladies Sunday, where the ladies' disciple ministry is in charge of service this morning. Praise the name of Jesus. And to pray, opening prayer is Sister Maloney, who will be doing our open prayer this morning. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Let's pray. Eternal God and most righteous Father, we give you thanks. Lord, we praise your name. Lord, we magnify your name. Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy. Lord, you are king of kings. You are lord of lords. You are the great I am. You are the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Father and God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies, Lord. Lord, it is of your mercies why we are not consumed. They are renewed every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Lord, you have been faithful to us. We thank you, God, for life. Lord, it is a, it is a blessing to be alive, oh God. Uh, we thank you, Lord. Lord, there are many who did not make it today. So we give you thanks and we give you praise, Lord, because you are an awesome God. You are a mighty God. Lord, we praise your name. We thank you, dear Father, for food. We thank you for clothing. We thank you for shelter, Lord. We thank you for the sunshine and for the rain. Most of all, Lord, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross of Calvary for our sins, that we can have forgiveness, Lord. Oh, God, we praise your name. Lord, there is none like you. None to be compared to you, Lord. Oh, God, you are the King of kings, and you are the Lord of lords. You are the great I am. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. Oh, God, we praise your name. We magnify you, Lord. You are our Jehovah Jireh, our great provider, Lord. You are our protector, Lord. You are our healer. You are our deliverer, God. We ask you, Lord, to continue to be with us. Oh, God, I pray, Lord, that you will forgive us of our sins. Where we would have failed you, Lord, we ask your forgiveness, Lord. Where we would have come short of your glory, Lord, we ask your pardon, oh, God. And, Lord, I pray, dear Father, that you will bless us, oh, God. Bless us individually, oh, God. You know our needs, Lord. Meet us at the point of our needs. Bless us collectively, O oh God, as a church, O oh God. I pray, Lord, that you will pour down of your blessings upon us, O oh God. Lord, I pray, God, that you will water our desert places, O oh God. And, Lord, you will fill us with your Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, we, are, we welcome you in our midst today, O oh God. Lord, come in and take up your board, O oh God. I pray, Lord, that you will bless 
each and every one of us, Lord. Continue to be with us, Lord, those who are sick, Lord. I pray, God, that you will minister healing to them, O oh God. Those who are in need, meet their needs, Lord. As our faces are different, so are our needs, O oh God. So, Lord, just continue to be with us and bless us, O oh God. Father and God, I pray, dear Father, that you will just take over in our midst, O oh God. Again, take over, Lord. I pray, God, that you will bless from the altar to the pews, Lord, right down to the door, Lord. Oh, God, bless every one of us, dear Father. Let there be a turn around in our lives to the oh God. Lord, we welcome your Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, come in and take over in our midst, dear Father. Lord, you know everything about us, Lord. It's not about us, Lord, but it's all about you. So, Father and God, just take over, I pray. Father and God, what is not of you, Lord, I command it to leave in the name of Jesus forces of darkness, everything that is not of you, spiritual wickedness in high places, go back to the dark places of the earth. Oh God, and we welcome the Holy Spirit. Take over, Lord. God, I bring the, pre the, the, the minister Williams and minister Bacchus before you. Father and God, I pray that you will be with them, Lord. You will bless them. You will continue to strengthen them in the inner man. Lord, you'll continue to give, give them new insights, O oh God. Help them, dear Father, to continue to hold up the pastor hand, O oh God. Father and God, continue to take over in their lives. Be with Pastor Lord and his family. Bless them, O oh God. Protect them and keep them from harm. Keep them from danger, Lord, from the snare of the fowler. Pastor Lord, continue to grant him your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, O oh God. Give him new insight, O oh God, new vision for the church, O oh God. Just take over in their lives. God, I bring the song leader before you, O oh God, the worship team before you, God. I pray, God, that you will bless them, dear Father. God, I pray that you will help them to lead us into worship, O oh God. Lord, take over in their lives, O oh God. Give them the right songs to sing, O oh God, that will bless and edify, O oh God. Father and God, I pray for the musician, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will help them to speak skillful, skillfully, Lord, under your anointing, O oh God, because it's the anointing that will break the yoke. Yes. Father and God, I pray for the media team. I pray that you will bless them, Lord. Continue to help them, dear Father, to keep themselves pure and holy, O oh God. Lord, continue to watch over them. Those who are in our listening audience, God, I pray that you will bless them, O oh God. And Lord, that the word that they will hear will make a change in their lives, O oh God. And Lord, they too will come to know you as Lord and Savior. The preach word I bring before you, God. I pray, Lord, that it will not fall on, fall on, on dry ground, Lord, but it will fall on fertile soil. That it will bring forth fruit, O oh God. Continue to be with us and bless us, O oh God. Lord, let your kingdom come and your will be done in this service, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And let the people of God say, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our scripture reading will be doing, done by Sister Haynes this morning, who is going to read the scripture. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Edwards, and welcome to each and every one who are here with us this morning. May you enjoy the service and give God a praise and a thanks that is going to his holy and faithful name. Our scripture reading this morning will be taken from Matthew 28, and I'll be reading from verse 17 to 20. Matthew 28, 17 to 20. When you find it, can you say amen? amen? Praise the Lord. And here begin it. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto him, saying, All power 
is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to absorb all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God, brethren. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we are going to hear from the worship team who will be led by Sister Grant. So open up your heart. Shut away everything else that is against you this morning and just open up your heart and your mind and just worship God this morning in spirit and in truth. You know when the praises goes up, then the blessings would come down. So just worship God. Feel free, those who are worshiping with us, welcome Brother Coombs this morning. Glad to have Brother Coombs with us this morning. Praise the Lord, and we welcome the Dean's family who is here this morning with our sister, Sister Dean. Welcome and feel free to worship, and we cont may God continue to bless the Dean's family and strengthen them this morning, and hoping that they will continue to come and give God all the praise and all the honor that is due to his name this morning. So welcome the worship team led by Sister Grant this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wave your hand in this place this morning. Tell the Lord that you love him this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we worship you. We worship you, God. We are here today because of your grace and your mercies, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. God, we come before you for a filling this morning. We come before you to be filled up, to be built up, to be blessed up. Lord God, we are depending upon you. Holy Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon us this morning, oh God. We know that we cannot make it in this world without you, Jesus. You are the author, you are the finisher of our lives, Lord. Have your way today, Holy Ghost. We welcome you in our presence, oh God. We stand upon your word this morning, oh God. We stand upon your promises, which is forever settled in heaven this morning, oh God. Father, you say where the two and the three are gathered, you are in the midst to bless. And we worship you this morning. God, we honor your name this morning because we know you are here. And we know that was the blessing goes up, oh God. Lord, you will send down as the praises go up. You're going to bless us. And we know that you are a faithful God this morning. Wave your hand if you believe that God is a faithful God. He is faithful. We are faithless. But God is faithful this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you all my life. I will sing to you with my whole heart. I will trust in you, my hope and my help, my maker.
Jesus. And it's only you are holy, oh God. It's only you who are worthy and wonderful. All my love and my life and my heart is a testimony this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is wonderful. Hallelujah. The splendor of a king this morning. He is a faithful God. He is our faithful God. Only he is holy this morning. And he is our king of kings and lord of lords. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Splendor of the King, Lord in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide and tremble.
That's our king this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to sing this hymn down at the cross. That's where we get our new life. That's where we get our hope. Hallelujah. That's where we see our, get our grace this morning. Down at the cross. Glory to his name this morning. After this, we'll take up our morning tithes and offering. Hallelujah. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where my friends in one sin I cry. There to my heart was a blood of Christ. Glory to his name. Oh, 
We love you this morning. The songwriter says, We love you, Lord, because you are God. We love you because you give us life. We love you because you keep us here today. Lord, we thank you because we are not in the hospital this morning. We are here, oh God, and we are in our right mind. Oh God, you give us the strength and the grace to be in your presence. So, Lord, we give you the honor. We give you the glory and we give you all the praise this morning. We thank you for everything you have done for us, oh God. Looking back in our life, Lord, where would we have been today? Where would we have gone to the Sunday, Lord? But in your presence, oh God. So Lord, we thank you for bringing us here and keeping us, oh God, day by day. And Lord, oh God, without you in our life, Lord, we would have been nothing. Oh God, we are here, Father. We are here this morning, Lord, only because of you, Lord. Only because you have brought us from so far, oh God. Lord, we praise you this morning, for there is no one else but you. Oh God, when men say it's not possible, Lord, you've said it's impossible for you, Lord. Everything is possible for you, Lord. And nothing can be done, and you will not withhold bread from us, oh God. This morning, Lord, I give you thanks, and I give you praise this morning for your honor and your glory. But only you alone knows. You alone knows the struggle, Lord. Only you alone understand, oh God. So, Lord, I give you the praise this morning, Father. Oh God, as I bring this offering before you in the name of Jesus, Father, bless the hands this morning. Bless those who give and those who do not have to give. Oh God, we are here in this world. Oh God, we thank you, oh God. We thank you for the many jobs, oh God. We thank you for the strength that we can go day by day. And oh God, that we can come back, oh God. So Lord, we bring it before you in the name of Jesus. Use it for your kingdom, oh God, and for your work, oh God. That it may further, oh God. And Lord, many will see and glorify. And you will get the praise and the honor, oh God, as you rightfully deserve. So bless it, oh God. Sanctify it, oh God, this morning, Lord. In no other name, but in your name. Amen and amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We continue celebrating Jesus this morning as we sing hallelujah for the Lord God Almighty. He reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord God Almighty reigns. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hallelujah.
his reign. He reigneth forever and ever. Hallelujah. 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 Open your mouth and say, Hallelujah. My Jesus reigns this morning. He's alive forevermore. And he lives in my heart. Jesus, you reign. You reign. You reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You deserve the glory and the praises this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You reign, you reign, you reign. Hallelujah. Let us rejoice and be glad because Jesus reigned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we know we have Sister Dean here with us and it's her birthday. So we just want you to go and love upon her today and her family and wish her happy birthday. Clap your hands this morning. She are with us this morning rejoicing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So just before we sing, I will rejoice and be glad in you. You'll go around and greet somebody. Greet Sister Dean and her family. Let me try and sing happy birthday for her this morning. We were by her last week, Wednesday night, celebrated her birthday. I want to say thanks to the family and thanks to Sister Dean. It was a glorious time. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.
those hands, clap those hands. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day of victory. We trample on the enemy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So when the enemy is coming like a flood this week, clap those hands because this is your day of victory. Amen. Rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus and he shall flee. Hallelujah. As we count down this morning, let us sing Jehovah is his name before we invite the moderator to come back. And truly this morning, it's all because of God this morning. And he is Jehovah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jehovah is your name.
Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. We want to thank Sister Grant and her team that lead us in such a wonderful worship service this morning. Praise the Lord. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And even for the musicians that play very skillfully this morning in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And to our technician, hallelujah, Brother Delano and Brother Bacchus, who is behind the camera. Praise the Lord. Give God some praise for them this morning. Praise the name of Jesus. And give God some praise for yourself this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I just want to say thank you for some returning visitors. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We have Miss. Yusila Bullock, who is back here with us. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mr. Coombs, who is here with us. That's Sister Coombs' husband. Please, praise the name of Jesus. Happy to have you, Mr. Coombs. And hope you come again. Praise the name of Jesus. And the Dean's family, who is here this morning with her. Sister Dean, who celebrated her birthday today. Give God some praise for them this morning in the house. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God and to Legal Coombs, which is Sister Coombs' son. So we are happy to have Legal and happy to have Mr. Coombs. So Sister Coombs have a husband and son here with her this morning. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And least but not last, the Joseph family who is now a part of us. Praise the Lord. Give them some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I miss one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Who, who do I miss this morning? Oh, we are welcoming Sister Shanika, who is back here from her vacation. Hallelujah. How could I forget my sister this morning? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God for you, Sister, Sister Cambridge, that the Lord has took her out for some vacation and she's back here with us worshiping this morning. And God is good. God take her out safely and bring her back safely. She's here with us this morning. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And now that all of the goodies would have gone already, we would have worshiped, give God some praise this morning. Now for the word of God, the word that will cut us, the word that will heal us. None other to introduce our speaker to you this morning. Our president, Sister Sadie Lewis, who is going to introduce our speaker this morning, who will be bringing the word of God to us. So open your heart and receive from the word of God. And brethren, when we hear the word of God, young people, please pay attention to the word of God and apply them to our own life. When we see ourselves through the word of God, that is what makes us clean. And that is how we are going to live according to God's will. When we hear the word of God and we apply them to our own life. Praise the name of Jesus. Welcome, Sister Louis. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank, thank you, Sister Edwards. And thank you, ladies, this morning, Woman Discipleship Ministry. We want to thank each and everyone who are here this morning to make this morning a very successful. Praise the name of the Lord. So this morning, we worship, we give God the glory, we give him the honor. Who regret that they are here this morning? Jesus said, this is the day that the Lord has, he has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And rejoice in his name. And now is the moment when we are going to sit at God's table and to receive from the man of God. A man of God who is humble, who is a family man, who is easy to talk to, a man with one wife, not you, Sister Ferdinand, praise the name of the Lord. So this morning, it's, it is my happy privilege and honor to, to present to us, to you, God's faithful servant, whom he has allowed to send to us to preach the word of God. So you sit down and just, um, rejo just accept 
what the Lord has for you this morning. So may God bless you, Pastor Paul. Praise. Thank you, Sister Lewis, for that wonderful welcome. I almost thought she was talking about somebody else. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. And it's so good to be in the house of the Lord today and to have you. And our moderator, Sister Edwards, has already given you a warm welcome. So I'll just say it's so good to see all the families in the house today, along with our regular church families. We have some other families, and may God bless you. As, as the moderator said, the Joseph have already become a part of us. And Sister Dean is having her birthday, and we celebrate with her and her family. And we also have our young sister, Sister Horn, her family is here. And uh, Mr. Coombs. You know, about over two years ago since I came to this church, I met Mr. Coombs. And Mr. Coombs has, over those two years, been always promising to come to church. And today is the first time I'm seeing him at church. It's a very good step. And I believe it's the beginning of great things to come. So welcome to Mr. Coombs this morning and his entire family. And we have been praying for you. And we pray that God is going to work great things in your life. Continue to trust the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sister, William, Sister Edward say all the goodies are done. But the word of God is goody too, okay? <laughs> so let us stay in tune today. I'm going to share with us a message that I would love to do in Bible study. As a matter of fact, I have already taught it in Bible study. But there are some folks that I don't see at Bible study. And I think that this message is important for every child of God. So I am going to share on evangelism this morning, congregational evangelism and uh, sister Haynes has read from Matthew chapter 28 the great commission where Jesus after his resurrection gave the disciples commission and send them out to evangelize the world so let's just take a moment and go to God in prayer. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for your love and for your goodness. And I thank you for your word. Lord, your word is sufficient for us. It is enough to teach us what we need to know about you. So I pray, oh God, that your words would come home to our hearts. I pray that we will give our full attention and, oh God, we would apply what we hear. We would not let it bypass us. We would not just let it go by. But, oh God, we would put your words into practice. And your will will be accomplished in our lives and in the earth. I pray that you would take full control. I pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. What is evangelism? And the answer is simple. It is simply sharing the gospel. And it is commanded by Christ in the Great Commission. When Jesus told the disciples to go into all the world and preach the gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ has come to save the lost. 
Jesus doesn't want to see people suffer. Jesus doesn't want to see people under the bondage of sin and Satan. And so he has given his disciples the command to carry the message, the good news to every person in the world. It doesn't matter the status of the person. It doesn't matter the educational background and all these things that sometimes serve as barriers. But Jesus wants the good news to reach every single person. And that is how much Jesus cares about us as human beings. It doesn't matter what our circumstance in life is. It doesn't matter our situation, whether we are sick or well, whether we are black or white, whether we are old or young, rich or poor. Jesus cares about us. And so he gave this command. A command is something to be obeyed. It is not about how you feel or what you want. It's not asking for your opinion. A command is to be obeyed. If you are in the military and you are issued a command and you disobey the command, you would have some very serious consequences. So it is to be obeyed. This gospel, this good news of Jesus is to be shared by preachers. But it's not preachers alone that must share the gospel. There are some special preachers that we call evangelists. They specialize in going from place to place to share this precious gospel. But it's not restricted to them alone. As a matter of fact, the gospel must be shared by all Christians. So if you are a Christian today, if today you name the name of Christ, then the command is for you to share the gospel with everybody. Our duty as the people of God is to proclaim his praises according to 1 Peter 2 verse 9. And Peter also says that we must be prepared to give a reason for our hope in Jesus Christ. And the reason why the church grew so quickly in the early years, the early church, is because the disciples, the Christians then, were obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. They were filled with the passion for Christ. They were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And they went forth in all the world. In spite of discouragement. In spite of persecutions. And they spread the good news of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, they turned the den wall upside down. So we are to follow in their footsteps. What is the importance of evangelism? When evangelism ceases, Christians wither and are cut off from bearing fruit. The Christians are to bear fruit. Witnessing and winning souls to Christ is one form of fruit bearing. And when we do not evangelize, we are being cut off from fruit bearing. 
which is why Christ saved us and left us into this world that we should bear fruit. And every farmer would tell you that if they have a fruit tree in their garden and it is not bearing fruit, they are going to cut it down. Because that's the purpose it's there for. It's not there for decoration. It's not there for conservation to keep up the soil. It's there to bear fruit. And if it's not bearing fruit, it will be cut down. When churches stop evangelizing, they will be cut off from their relationship with the Lord and they will die. And that is why the Lord said to the church at Ephesus that they had forgotten their first love. They must return to their first love and to get back that desire, that passion to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Also, the church as, at Sardis was warned to be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. And the Lord said, For I have not found thy works perfect before God. So, any church that fails to evangelize is failing the Lord. It is not doing what God wants it to do. So evangelism is the spirit of the church. Just as a body without the spirit is dead, so the church without evangelism is dead. So the Christian without evangelism is dead. Evangelism is to be essential function of the Lord's church. So that means that all other activities revolve around evangelism. So every time we have a church service, there is an element of evangelism in it. As a matter of fact, that is the central focus of the service. It's all about reaching all those people whom God loves with an everlasting love, whom Christ came to die for. It is about reaching them with the love of God. Many people do not understand God's heart for them. They don't understand how much God loves them. And God does not want to see them suffer. It is the devil who brings suffering into the world. And when we do not obey the Lord, the devil takes advantage of us. He gets the opportunity to come into our lives and to come into our families and to bring destruction with him. Because the devil has come to destroy. He always comes as though he is the nicest person in the world. Someone says that the devil has a thousand faces. So he can disguise himself in the way he wants to make it look good to you. But he comes to destroy. It may appear that you are prospering for a moment. It may appear that you are doing well. But eventually, destruction will come into your life. And that's the way the devil operates. But God loves this world. 
that he gave his life for it. And God says to his people, to the Christians, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, it is your responsibility to share the gospel with others. Type of evangelism. There are many good ways to evangelize. Public preaching and teaching. Private studies and conversation. We have the media, TV and radio and internet. We also have personal evangelism. Where you meet a person one-on-one. -on -one and you make contact and present the gospel. Mass evangelism. Crusade and street meetings. Friendship evangelism. That's what we are doing in Bible study on Wednesday evening. How to, how to go about making contact, being friendly, making friends with the sole purpose of being able to share the gospel with others. If we live selfishly, if we live a segregated life, when we are ready to share the gospel, there would be no one who would want to listen to us. But when we, when we are able to empathize with people, when we are able to understand people's situation, when we are able to show them love and concern, they will open to us. And would be able to share with them a word from God. This is what God wants Christians to do. To spread his influence throughout the world. So we have been doing friendship evangelism. And if you have not yet come, I encourage you to do so. We have sports evangelism. And the men recently had cookout evangelism. Children evangelism, so on and so forth. The name is given based on the type of activity or the target group. So certain types of evangelism are usually emphasized. But if a church is not doing a particular type, it doesn't necessarily mean that the church is not evangelizing. For example, if a church is not doing crusade, it doesn't necessarily mean the church is not evangelizing because crusade is one form of evangelism. And there are other forms that can be engaged in. So, it is good to do many different forms, to reach many different people. Because you may not be able to reach certain people by crusade or so, and you may be able to get through to them by another method. So it's good to use a variety of different forms of evangelism so you can reach as many people as the Lord would want you to reach. And that is why I want to emphasize congregational evangelism. Congregational evangelism has proven to have worked well in many places. It works where there is a congregation already existing. You already have a church set up with members. So, with any congregation of Christians, there is the potential for evangelism. But it can only work if the members are willing to do their part and to make it work. 
So even though we have a congregation, if the members are not willing and ready to obey the Lord's command, then it will not work. So what is congregational evangelism? It occurs when the members utilize their contacts, their abilities, natural gifts, and their spiritual gifts. And they use it in conjunction with the congregation's services to produce a positive effect among those who visit. Okay? So the members of the church are working in cooperation with the church services to produce a positive effect on visitors, to make visitors feel warm and welcome. And not just to create the feeling, but to be genuine about it. All right? Not just an artificial welcome, but a genuine welcome. So it means that we have to be genuinely concerned about people. We have to care for people generally. Not just when we want to share the word of God with them. So we have to take time to understand them. And to understand their needs and their situations. And be able to help when it is possible. To help where we can. So that we would be in a good position to share the gospel with them. So, congregational evangelism is also using the church services to produce a positive effect on visitors with the ultimate goal that, number one, people would be encouraged to come to church. When there is a positive effect created, when we create the right atmosphere, people would be encouraged to come. People would want to come. And secondly, when they come and hear the word of God preached by anointed servants, it can lead to their conversion. So those of us who preach the word of God, we also have the solemn responsibility to prepare ourselves before God, to go before God and to get a word from God and to come under the anointing of the Holy Spirit so that when we preach the word of God, it would have positive effect in the lives of those who hear. The spirit of the Lord would be present and the power of God would go to work on the hearts of the hearers and they would be moved to commit their lives to Jesus Christ. This is evangelism and this is what Christ has commanded us to do. Let us not lose sight of the vision. Let us not be selfish. Sometimes we think only of ourselves and what we want and what we need. And we think only of our problems. But God wants us to think about him. And what he wants us to do. And when we put our attention into God's business. What God wants from us. God is going to take care of our business. 
which sometimes we can't take care of by ourselves. We need the mighty hand of God. But when we put God first, God is going to take care of the other things in our lives that we want him to take care of. But what we do sometimes is to focus only on what we need from God. Only on what we want God to do for us. But God wants us to change our focus. To have a shift and to focus on what he wants so that he can take care of our situation. <clears throat> Two important functions to make congregation evangelism work. The members, the congregation must utilize their contacts. Because each of us here, we have a circle of influence. You are connected with people that maybe nobody else here is connected to. So we have our own fear of influence. We have our own network. These may include family members, friends, neighbors, co-workers. So as members of the church, we must be willing to invite our contact to church. We should have that, con that strong conviction about our church. And we would be willing to invite our family members, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers. Not just to, we are not inviting them just for a social encounter. Just for them to come to church and socialize. You know, when we come to church, we will socialize because we are dealing with other people. But that's not the main focus. That is not what we must focus on. And sometimes even us as Christians we can lose our focus in church. We do, not, we do not seem to show that we understand sometimes why we come to church. We come because we want God to work on our needs and the needs of others, those who need the Lord Jesus Christ. So we must be willing to invite the people in our network to church. Also, the members must make use of their ability and spiritual gifts. Each member has abilities and spiritual gifts to offer. These may vary. Each of us ha have different gifts. But God wants us to use our gifts for the building up of the body. So we have a common goal for the building of the kingdom of God. And we must be willing to use our gifts and our abilities to build up the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is on the member's part. It works by utilizing the congregation's services. We come together regularly for worship, for Bible study, for prayer. Sometimes we have discussions and other activities. These 
services should be used to create an impact on those who visit. Because a negative impact or a positive impact can be created. The impact can be either negative or positive. And sometimes when it is negative, those people who are there would never return. You know, they say first impressions are lasting. And sometimes when, when a visitor comes to church and we create a negative impact, sometimes they never come back. I am not giving anybody excuse for not going to church because some people can use, use this as an excuse. But as members and Christians, we have to be careful to create the right impact that would encourage people to come to the services. When, when services are utilized positively to achieve the desired goal, that is what we call congregational evangelism. So congregational evangelism is where the members of the church would use their personal contact and the church services to create the positive impact to encourage people to come to church and when people come to church they receive the word of God and get saved so we must be activated we must activate the membership the members must, first of all, commit themselves to evangelism. Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we are a special people. And our responsibility as God's chosen, as God's called out, is to show forth his praises by taking the good news of Jesus Christ to all those who need to receive it. So we must commit ourselves to the task. We must stop making lame excuses and stop putting other things in front because this is what God wants us to do. We must make the commitment. And secondly, the members must set a good example of Christianity in their everyday life. Not only a good example on Sunday morning when we come to church. It's easy to be a Christian on Sunday morning when the Holy Spirit is flowing in the service and we can come and dance and shout in the presence of God. That is all well and good. That is wonderful. That is excellent. But it must go beyond the church services. We must set a good example in our lifestyle. In the home. Because if the other members of our family don't have confidence in our Christianity... How are we going to invite them to church? How are we going to share the gospel with them? 
they will not be willing to listen to us. They would not wa even want to hear us. Far less to obey. So we have to share this gospel of Christ first and foremost by our example. We must demonstrate to the world that the power of God is working in our lives and they will be convinced that that same power that has delivered me, that has changed me, can change them also. Hallelujah. That same power, Holy Ghost power that has brought healing and salvation into my life can bring healing and salvation to others. So we must demonstrate it in our lives. I know it's a challenge. I know it is hard because sometimes we are tempted. Sometimes we have needs, we have burdens. And the enemy works against us. But we must be determined. And we must learn how to trust in God. Because when we trust in God, he will come through for us. God is going to work it out in spite of all. So when we learn how to trust God, we'll be able to show somebody else, we'll be able to teach someone else how to trust God. So we make the commitment and we set a good example and we must be willing to invite our friends to church. And there are many ways we can do it. We can give them cards, telephone, WhatsApp, letter, Facebook, email. We live in a world that information can get around so fast. There's an information explosion. So there is no excuse of us reaching them and contacting them. Sometimes we are able to reach them with all the, the messages that are being forwarded on WhatsApp and on Facebook. But what about evangelizing, spreading the message of Jesus Christ? Do we take time to do that? Nathaniel said in John chapter 1, verse 46, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. Philip was ready to invite, Come and see. And so we must be willing to invite the people in our network to come and see this man Jesus Christ is working in our midst. The members must also extend kindness to those who visit. The Bible says we must not be forgetful to entertain strangers for some have entertained angels unaware without knowing. The person that you see in tattered clothing might well be an angel of God, you never know. So we must always be willing to show kindness even to strangers. So we must extend kindness to people. And when we do that, we are displaying a positive image of God. We are telling them what God is like. We are showing people 
who God is. We are putting God's character on display. But when we do otherwise, we are giving a bad picture of God. People not understanding God for who he is. Because we are not portraying him correctly. And the members must create opportunities for teaching and ministry. So, you yourself don't even have to do all the ministering. You can refer the person to someone else. Someone has a situation that you think you need backup on. So you can call on the pastor. You can call on the minister. You can call on your president. You can call on somebody to give you assistance. So, every member, every Christian in the body of Christ has a responsibility to play in this whole process. It means if we have to create a positive effect in the church service, that we want to invite people to. There are some things that we need to do. We need to practice. They need to become our culture. It is not that these are things that we are hearing for the first time. But we need a reminder. The members must arrive early. We must endeavor to come to service early. Make it our business. There are some Christians when it's work time they would make their best effort or if they have to go to catch the plane they would put out their best effort but when it comes to church service anything goes. It can't be like that. We must make our best effort to arrive early. And many times our visitors are, are there early and it would give us an opportunity to interact with them even before the service begins. There are times when we can offer the visitor a ride to church. I have heard of many Christians and many preachers who are traveling to church and passing their own members on the way and not even stopping to give a ride to church. But we have to practice these things. It is part of evangelism. It is part of building up the kingdom of God. The members must greet the visitors at the door. Greet them before service and after service. Leave the back seat for the hospitality team so that they would be able to greet the visitors as well when they come in. And when we come to service, the same service that we invite our friends and our family members to, when we come, we must offer worship that edifies. You know, sometimes we come to church and we're feeling sick. Sometimes we're feeling tired. Sometimes we are feeling depressed. But God wants us to get over those feelings. 
Don't allow those feelings to get over us. But we rise above them. And when we start worshiping God, when we start focusing on God, many times the sickness leaves, the pain leaves us. We don't know where it goes. When we start worshiping God, the depression and the discouragement leaves us. So when we come into the house of God, we come to worship him. We come to focus on him. And when we worship God, God will do what he has to do. 1 Corinthians 14, 26. Let all things be done unto edifying. So when we come to church, we are seeking to edify others, to build up others in the holy faith. Not to discourage them. Not to talk about them. Not to criticize them. But we come to build up. We come to encourage and to share the word of God. Those who lead must be leading by example. You demonstrate what you want with enthusiasm and passion. By every member setting an example and doing what God wants you to do. Even how we listen in church is important. Sometimes we listen and we show boredom. We show tiredness and sleepiness. We have to try to fight against these distractions, these distracting spirits, and come with readiness, with open mind, so that the atmosphere in church would be charged with the presence of God. And anybody who we invite to church they would come in an atmosphere that is charged with the presence of the Holy Spirit. And that is something that they would not be able to deny. When you enter the presence of God, you must recognize God's presence. You must recognize the difference. So that is what we want to create in this service when we come to church. Because every service is an evangelistic service. It has an evangelistic element to it. And it is the Lord, it is the Holy Spirit who is able to draw men and women unto him. So when we come, we must come prepared to create the right environment the right atmosphere that God can walk in and God can do what he has to do. It calls for preparation. We have to take time to prepare ourselves for worship. Prepare ourselves at home. We might have a little problem on our mind. And if we come in that state, it will show on us. It will show up in the service. So if we can take a little time out to go to God in prayer, and we can pray up ourselves, so that when we come, we come with the Spirit of God. And when another brother comes with the Spirit of God, and we come in, in an anointed atmosphere, whoever comes will be touched by the power of God. And this is the kind of service we want to create so that 
men and women who don't know Christ will come to know him. Whom to know is life eternal. You see, people don't understand what they are missing out in Jesus Christ. They, they are not aware of how the enemy is working against them. It appears as though he is working for them, but the enemy is working against them. And we as God's children, we have been commissioned. We have been empowered to bring the love of God to those who need it most. There are many who are dying, they are perishing. They are waiting and they are longing. Some people do not even understand their own needs. The things that they seek after. The things that they think they need. And not the things they need. Sometimes it's the thing that is destroying them. And we with the gospel light. Those of us who have tasted that the Lord is good. It is our responsibility to stir them up. To shake them up. And to point them to the light. There are men who are groping in darkness. But we have the light of Jesus Christ. And we have to reflect that light. So that men and women can come to this light. For God so loved the world. The entire world. Not just us Christians. But the entire world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever. It's a whosoever. It doesn't matter what you have done in life. It doesn't matter where you are in life. Whosoever must believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. This is God's vision for the world. This is what God wants for the world. And we are God's ambassadors. We are assisting God. We are God's agents carrying out his mission in this world. So let us not lose focus of our mission. Let us not lose focus of our call. When we come, let us come prepared for the mission. And I'm calling on us to make a recommitment to evangelism. And I want us to focus for this year, 2019, to make it, excuse me, to make it a year that we focus on evangelism in all its form. And let us trust God to break through in many lives. Let us trust God to break through in many families because there is a vicious cycle going around and around living for the devil and the devil is taking us down and down and down. But we want God to break in we want God to intervene and change things, to make, turn things around for the better. And that is our mission. That is our call. And that is our focus. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father, I want to thank you today for your words. And I thank you for your people. I pray, O oh God, that we would heed your word 
and we will do that which you have commissioned us. I thank you, Lord, for providing the strength, everything that we need. I pray for a fresh anointing. I pray for new power to walk the way that you have outlined. Oh God, I pray that you would bring all your people on board. Those who are lagging. Those who are being distracted. Lord, those who are indifferent. Those who are complacent. Those who are falling. I pray, oh God, that you would bring everyone on board. As we move forward, growing from strength to strength. From grace to grace and doing your will. I thank you for the victory today in Jesus' name. There is a song that we used to sing from the hymnal. I don't know if we remember that song. I think it's page 388 on, in the hymnal. Throughout the lifeline. Mr. Grant, you know that song? Anybody knows that one? Come, Sister Richards. Help me sing this one. Let us stand as we sing throughout the lifeline. Across the dark wave, there is a brother whom someone should save. Somebody's brother. Oh, who then will dare to throw out the lifeline his peril to shame? Hallelujah. Throw out the lifeline across the dark wave. There is a brother whom someone should save. Somebody's brother, oh, who then will dare to throw out the lifeline is peril to share. Throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline. Someone is drifting, drifting away. Throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline. Someone is sinking today. Throw out the lifeline with hands. Why do you tarry, my brother, so long? The old thinking is thinking away. Throw out the lifeline. Okay, we will just Throw sing the chorus, all right? Lifeline. Don't bother to go on to the verses. Let's just sing the chorus. Drifting away. Throw out the lifeline. Sing it again, throw out the lifeline. Throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline. Someone is sifting, drifting away. Throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline. Someone is sinking to the Let's sing it one more time, throw out the lifeline. Throw out the lifeline, throw out the Drifting, drifting away. away. Throw out the lifeline. Throw Someone is sinking today. Throw out the lifeline. Throw out the lifeline. Throw out the lifeline. Someone is 
is drifting, away. drifting away. You are here this morning and uh, you know that you need the Lord in your life. Maybe things have not worked for you the way you expected and uh, you want to give Jesus a chance in your life. I would like to invite you to come and let us pray with you as you make a decision and a commitment for the Lord. Is there anybody like that? You can just slip your hand up. I see that hand. Is there anybody else? Is there one more person? Maybe we can have a little music in the background. Is there one more person? You understand God's love for you. God's unfailing love but you are not experiencing that love in your life maybe things are chaotic is there somebody else who would say yes Lord I want you to change my life change the circumstances turn things around for me you have tried but it didn't work because you can't do it all by yourself. You can't work it by your own power and your own strength. It's under the power of the Lord. I'm going to invite you who lifted your hands to just walk forward so that we can pray with you. And If there is somebody else you can join in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is there one more person who would step out for the Lord Jesus Christ? This whole service is all about you. It's all about God's love and concern for you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let us be in a spirit of praying. Hallelujah. Let us focus on the Lord and ask him to do something special today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. We want to thank the Lord for being with us today and uh, for everyone who has been here. We will continue to pray for you and I want to invite you to keep coming to the house of the Lord. Most importantly, to obey the voice of the Lord. Many times the Lord speaks to us, but we are disobedient. But if we want to reap the blessings of God, we have to learn how to be obedient. Praise the Lord.